Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm going to show you how to draw some Halloween scenes, just little bits of vignettes of scenes. And I'm going to do it with an MFT stamp set and die set. This little set has some fun sentiments that you can use outside of Halloween. And then these little ghosties that are all dressed up in their Halloween costumes. And I'm going to use it along with this stitched die set and make a scene in each one of these and then nest it into the finished thing for a card that's going to be really flat. Long story short, you can go in different directions with this, right side up, upside down. I've done cards similar to this and I will try to link to some of those at the end perhaps, but you can figure out which sentiments go in which ones if you want to have multiple sentiments or which of the characters, especially when you've got these little teeny tiny ones, they're perfect for making little scenes. So I'm starting off with some Nina cardstock. This is the Desert Storm because it's really good for a lot of these dark kinds of scenes that I want to make. And I'm making pencil lines around it. And since I want to make multiples of this, I can just make a whole bunch of these. I'm centering my die so that they're all in the same place when I use them in the Misty. So make sure that you get that in the right location so that when you do your stamping, it always comes out the same. So I'm going to place all of my images on here and I'm trying to figure out which ones might be good for what kind of scenes behind them in each one of their little blocks. Remembering that the blocks are going to extend past where that die line is because usually the metal of the die line is not at the edge of where it cuts. So I'm just playing around with when the little ghost is flying, he's going to be up above the sentiment, he's going to be toward the top, maybe at an angle and I'm gonna add just little pieces in there. This middle one, I wanted it to hang out on both sides, but if the little critters hung out on both ends, they would go into the next piece on the left or the right. So I'm gonna make a little mask and I'm gonna play on the other scenes so that they're not interrupted by the mask. And then I only have to stamp this thing once. I don't have multiple stamping to create this entire scene and I can make a whole bunch of them all at once. So these are the two little guys that I wanted to be little friends and didn't want them spilling over into the left and the right. Now you can also, as I've done before, make a storyline out of this. If you have sentiments that lead to, say, a whole birthday party type scene or something, you can use the same characters and make them interact in different ways. There's a lot of different things you can do with something like this. So I've got everything pretty well set. I was gonna have the pumpkin over there and I decided I really wanted to have I want to suck your blood. This little guy, he's so cute, the little vampire, ghosty. And then I've got it inked up. And depending on what medium you're going to use, you want to use an ink that will work with that. With colored pencil, like I'm going to use, you can use almost any ink, I think. I'm using the uh, Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink is what I used here. So I'm going to add a few pieces to each scene to make them a scene. I'm adding a horizon line in places where I can add that horizon line. Sometimes it's going to be straight. Sometimes like this one is going to be receding off into the distance. And I'm going to create a little row of mountains outside of it, out in the far distance. And since it's going to be a night scene, I can just scribble in and color some lumps in order to make mountains. So I don't feel like you have to know how to draw perfect mountains to do something like this, especially when they're going to be really tiny because really all you need to do is have something that looks to the, the eye of the viewer like it's just gonna work. It doesn't have to be drawn perfectly. I have a couple circles, a couple different sizes that I punched so that I could make some moons if needed for my scenes. It's always easier drawing inside of a mask rather than around the outside of an object. And this one I thought I'd do a little haunted house type of scene and I'm just going to draw a square or a rectangle with a triangle on top that's a little curved and then leave some windows and doors in it. And then I'm going to add a fence alongside the rounded hill by just drawing a line and then you can make all kinds of kitty wampus fence posts and it'll look all spooky when you make it as part of a night scene. The trees are basically long, tall triangles that are scribbly on the outside. That's as easy as I can figure out how to explain the trees. If you just made straight up triangles, that would still work because the sky behind it is going to be dark anyway. You just want that kind of a shadow. And then I'm going to have a road that's going to get bigger as it gets toward the front because that's what the perspective would do. 
And then I decided to do one more moon for my little vampire. And I'm ready to start coloring. I'm going to speed this way up because really it's just coloring. <laughs> And I'm going to use the magic color pencil technique with some Gamsol when I'm all done. But I'll talk a little bit about the colors here. I'm going to use the same blue for my skies, but I'm not going to put a blue sky in everything. Because then the whole card's going to be really blue. So I picked three of them to add the blue sky. I'll use the same green in a bunch to make dirt on some of them, grasses on others. So I have a variety of different kinds of grounds that they're standing on, so it's not... Uh, green everywhere and I'll make some yellow roads you know just little little touches of yellow because everything has to have yellow on it the way that my world rolls right you know that and some of the other scenes are gonna have some orange sky orange and brown that sort of thing because the orange is gonna bring that pop of Halloween into it it's also gonna have some warmth to it where I have the blue and the green that are gonna be cool colors so this just adds some contrast to it and then I'll add a little bit more yellow because, yeah, yellow. <laughs> and for each of my orange scenes, in the skies in there, rather than just have a big old plain orange background, I thought it would be interesting to make a gradation into more of a burnt sienna kind of color. So add a few shadows here and there just to add some difference in some of the colors. And then it's time for the Gamsol. This is the bottle. I'm not going to turn it sideways so you can see it because it might spill, the lid's already off. And I've put some of the Gamsol into the lid because it's a lot easier to deal with in the lid. If you've used this on white paper before, you don't usually see this grayness. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to show you this because the color will slowly lighten. But one of the things I like about it on this particular paper, this uh, Desert Storm paper, is that it does make it darker. It makes the colors a little spookier and adds a little atmosphere to them. I'm going around to the same colors while that color is on the edge of, of my blending stump. And not because you can't clean it off, but because it's just going to be easier to move that color from one place to another. But there is a blending stump sharpener. And it's just some sandpaper that's on this little stick. And it works really well to sharpen and clean off the edge of it. But you can also just wipe it off on a piece of scratch paper but it does help to keep it a little pointier by doing the sandpaper thing. So I'm still using the large one because I'm still doing backgrounds and just running around doing those. And notice the color, yes, does get darker because the Gamsol is actually seeping into the paper and making it kind of wet-ish with whatever is in the Gamsol, whatever that liquid is. And it's not gonna hurt anything but you're probably not going to want it to be a card that's a one layer card because some of that might go through the paper depending on what kind of paper you're using. This is going to be glued down on something so I'm not at all worried about that. And I'm just going to spread out my blue color that's in the sky and start working through some of these little last details. I'm making sure that I do scribble out beyond that pencil line. Remember I said that the die is going to make the pencil line in closer. So whatever die you use, you want to color further than that out to the edge. For my ghosts, since I have done this on the Desert Storm paper, I can use white pencil to add my highlights. White pencil is not always going to work over top of other colors. So if you were doing your ghosts on a white paper, you would conversely add shadows instead of adding highlights. And here I get to just add that white pencil to make a side, one side or the other have a highlight to it. And typically, wherever that highlight's gonna be is where is closest to the light. But on something like this, don't stress about it. A lot of people get really worried if, you know, oh my goodness, my light is not in the right place. I don't know where I should put it. Just put it somewhere, just pick a place and get going. Each one of these scenes may have a different light source depending on where the moon is, and that's okay. So I'm just going to run around and give each one of them a little bit. Even these two little guys in the middle, I'm going to do one on the left-hand side, one on the right-hand side. And nobody's going to fire me for not having a perfectly accurate light source. And my moon didn't dry back as much as I wanted it to, so I'm just going to add a little white to it to brighten it up. 
And then I'm going to use a white pen to make really sharp white highlights just on the top edges or the outer edges, wherever the brightest portion is on each of my images, because that's going to make it really pop. And then they have the soft pencil that goes out to the place where it fades into that brown color. And it, it just makes it pop a whole lot more. To finish off the card, I've die cut a piece of black cardstock from with the frame and checking that everything goes out to the edges that it needs to. And then I've taken a piece of scratch white cardstock. Black actually works better, but I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. So glue this down. I'm using Be Creative tape around each one of those places where the lines is. And I'm using tape that's going to have a little bit spread out beyond that because they want each of the sides of each one of my little squares and rectangles to be held down by that same piece of tape. You can also just slather it with whatever adhesive you like. You can use sheets of adhesive, all different kinds of things, but you want good adhesive down there so everything nests in here perfectly. And then trim off that white edge and put it onto a card. Now I want to apologize because the next bit of footage didn't record. I don't know why that is, but what I did was go through after I got everything in place and I did another layer of color on each one of these and you'd be amazed at how well it comes out when you color it a second time over top of what you've already colored and used the Gamsol on. I did not know that it came out that intense, but look at the intensity of this color. This is not a Photoshop trick. This is the way it actually looks which is very darn cool. So try that the next time you're using the magic colored pencil technique and see if you can get some really strong color. I've even added stars with my white pen, little fine details at the very end. This is a version that I did using the techniques from the autumn scenes class that's over on the art-classes.com site, link in the doobly-doo and use those to make scenes out of each one of these. So those of you who have taken the class, you can see different ways that you can use the techniques you've learned in that class on your greeting cards using other stamps. So that's about it for today. Again, apologies for that lost footage. And I will see you guys again next time. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet already by clicking on my face. You can watch other different uh, videos here. And there's a link on the screen to that autumn scenes class if you want to go check it out. And I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day.